And we welcome you into America's Forum for this Monday with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth. As Miranda mentioned in the Newsmax Now update, terrorism continues to dominate our news. Once again, the latest Somali-based Islamist militants have made threats against shopping malls here at home, including the Mall of America up in Minnesota. And shoppers across the country are told to be on alert. Meanwhile, ISIS releases a new propaganda video showing children. Take a look at this. Children as young as five years old training as young jihadists. And to try to offset this, the administration has sent the new defense secretary, Ash Carter, to Kuwait this morning to meet with allied leaders and discuss how to best battle ISIS. For more on all of these developing stories, we're pleased to be joined by retired intelligence officer Colonel Derek Harvey. Colonel Harvey's also a former advisor to General David Petraeus. Colonel, it is always good to have you here on America's Forum. Great to be here, J.D. and Miranda. And as you Skype in from Tampa, let's get first to that threat on shopping malls. The group making the threats, Al-Shabaab. Colonel, what do we know about them? Well, Al-Shabaab is been a terrorist organization operating in Somalia and East Africa for some time. They're behind bombings and, and other attacks in that part of the world. And they conducted a uh, mall attack themselves not too long ago in 2013. They have a community that resides in the Minneapolis area. They recruit from, they've had some success recruiting uh, Somalians to come back and train and fight for them. So we do know a lot about that group. What do these videos indicate to us here? Well, the videos of the training uh, and the video talking about, you know, taking attacks to America and the Mall of Americas. One, I would just say, J.D., that since 2004, we've had references to attacking uh, the Mall of the Americas specifically. Um, it has gone on for some time. We've always known that malls are a potential prime target that could have outsized impact on the U.S. economy, particularly if they hit around Thanksgiving or something like that. Um, Training-wise with the children, we've seen that type of, of activity, be it with Hamas, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad in the West Bank. We've seen it in Lebanon. We've also seen Iranians and others do this type of very young uh, children uh, training, recruiting posters, things like that. It's indoctrination at the very earliest ages. Would you say that this is an indication, though, that these groups are strengthening? Uh, it's, it, I'm not sure you could say it's strengthening, but you know they have got breadth and depth to them, and we, we seem to forget that they are well-led, uh, they are focused, they are dedicated, and they are supported in a number of communities. Uh, and that provides them with capabilities in operational environments that are important to sustaining them. Uh, Colonel, you mentioned this is not the first threat specifically mentioning the Mall of America, but uh, in the wake of this one, we have the Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, warning us to take this very seriously. Do you agree with his assessment, and why now would uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security come out uh, and very forcefully respond to this type of threat? I think that's for public consumption. I doubt that there's any specific information uh, indicating that there's an attack on the Mall of the Americas that is in planning, that there's any evidence. If there had been, we probably would have acted on it a long time ago. The, the thing is, you know, you want to assuage the concerns of the public. And the one thing that is very different is these calls for individual uh, lone wolf attacks. Uh, and that has got intelligence and public uh, security officials very concerned because it does take just one person. And with the reach of social media, being able to tap into one sociopath, you know, to take an action at the Mall of Americas, you know, that is not a reach, I don't think. Colonel, new Defense Secretary Ashton Carter, as we mentioned earlier, is in Kuwait. He's meeting with top officials to discuss how to battle and defeat ISIS. What would you advise him to do? And Colonel, about a minute left for this answer, sir. Well, one is we have been insufficient in portraying both the military as well as the political engagement in Iraq and in Syria. Syria has been, for the most part, off the table. Just some airstrikes 
very few th things done there. We really do have to strike deeper into both Syria and Iraq to hit the, them. And the only way we can do that is if we put more U.S. forces on the ground and partner them with Jordanian Special Operations Forces as well as the very good Iraqi Special Operations Forces. We touched on it earlier. When we come back, uh, we'll delve more into this notion of uh, enlisting children in terror training featured in the latest ISIS video. While it is nothing new to see these video images, it is very, very disturbing. Stay, to say the least. And, uh, Five. Five years old. Yeah. Mindful of that, Colonel Harvey, an expert on a whole lot of things dealing with terrorism, will be back with us to continue the conversation. You stay with us, too. Back now on America's Forum, you see this video of uh, kids as young as five being trained by ISIS to engage in jihad. We understand they, they, they've even uh, gone as far as to teach these kids how to behead dolls as part of their training. So, if the U.S. gets back involved here, what will our military do to counter fighters who might be just a little older than toddlers. Let's continue the conversation now with Colonel Derek Harvey. Colonel Harvey, we see this and at first we're shocked and then we go, now Now wait a minute. Is this legitimate or is this a psyops, psychological operation? Based on what you're seeing, is, is this legitimate training of five-year-old would-be jihadists? Well, I think it's it's mostly for information operations and to, to show what they're doing in, in the parts that they control. The, the main thing is we've seen this sort of thing before. Again, I mentioned Hamas, Palestinian groups, even in Iran. And we're going to confront youthful, very young fighters who might be just carrying a grenade, might have explosives on them that will be detonated remotely by somebody else. You know, these types of things we've confronted in, in small pieces in different places in the past, Afghanistan and Iraq. This may be more systematized when we go and fight in places like Mosul, though. Well, mindful of this, if U.S. forces are involved, and there is a point of contention, Colonel, about uh, the authorization for the use of military force, a lot of people think that as that is written right now, lawyers will be all over the rule of engagements. Uh, is this designed, having kids designed uh, to further flummox Americans and others who may be forced to take them on? Well, clearly it will cause us to pause and have to think this through, and it, it has a, a real impact. And then there will be, of course, images of, of young kids, you know, youthful, uh, very young age children who will have been killed. Uh, and that will be then portrayed in ISIS's social media to further inflame Sunni Arab communities, not only in Iraq and Syria, but across the region. And it's part of a very artful manipulation. It's very malign in its intent, and they are very good at it. And we just have to be prepared to counter it. About three minutes remain. Let's shift from the Middle East to uh, Europe, Eastern Europe, specifically to the Ukraine, uh, the ceasefire, was interrupted by a bomb blast yesterday. In your opinion, Derek Harvey, will this ceasefire last? No, I don't believe the ceasefire will last at all. It's, it's very problematic. I think we're going to see a pattern here. I think the pattern's already emerging, which is to engage, uh, talk, then break those tactical agreements, because they're only stepping stones to the next step for Vladimir Putin. He, he knows that the West doesn't want a confrontation, but he'll make an agreement, hold it for a while, and then move on and continue to erode it on the fringes. J.D., what I'm worried about is this may be foreshadowing a larger move by Putin to really take a major land grab someplace else along that frontier, be it in Latvia, Estonia, or someplace else. And that alarm is worth heeding. Uh, in terms of uh, rhetorical offensive, Senator John McCain went on the Sunday shows this weekend uh, saying he's ashamed at how we are failing to help the Ukrainian people. Let's listen and get your reaction. 
Honestly, uh, it, it's terrible. The Ukrainians aren't asking for American boots on the ground. That's not the question here. They're asking for weapons to defend themselves, and they are being slaughtered, and their army is, military is being shattered. This is a shameful chapter. I'm ashamed of my country, I'm ashamed of my president, and I'm ashamed of myself that I haven't done more to help these people. It is really, really heartbreaking. A minute 30 remains, uh, John McCain listing a lot of different uh, entities there for shame. Is he on target? He's absolutely on target. The president has a pattern of letting down friends, letting down allies, and shooting behind the rabbit, meaning always reacting to something after it's already taken place. If we would have armed the Ukrainians provided more steadfast political as well as limited military support to help them earlier, it would have shown Vladimir Putin that there was something behind the words. But we failed to do that. We failed to do it with northern Iraq, the Yazidis. We failed to do it with Mosul. We failed to do it with ISIS warnings two years ago. Well, Colonel Harvey, uh, the new euphemism for leading from behind is shooting behind the rabbit with uh, predictable results, and you made mention of perhaps uh, another threat from Vladimir Putin, Russian expansionism continuing, and of course this weekend, there was Putin rhetorically puffing out his chest and saying that Russia's military strength is unmatchable. At least there is no prevalent counterforce or countermeasures being taken. Colonel Harvey, we're going to ask you to stay right there. When we come back, Ryan Morrow will join the conversation. You stay with us too now as America's Forum continues on Newsmax TV on this Monday morning.